Let's bring our next storyteller, Jose Rico. Last November in 2017, I experienced what every parent in Chicago dreads. My 21-year-old son, Tisok, uh, was in the crossfire of a shooting as he was coming home from school at Harold Washington College. This happened four blocks from where we currently live, on California and Cermak. He literally dodged the bullet that night. And after that incident, for many nights, he experienced a lot of anxiety. He had sleepless nights. Him and I were getting into fights. And he started looking out of his window, telling me that there were people out to get us. When I took him to see the doctor, immediately the doctor diagnosed him with PTSD. And he said that he needed to see a therapist and possibly some, um, to get some, um, some medication. And so we're like, great, we need to do that. And he gave us a prescription, and as we started making phone calls to see where we could see a psychiatrist or a psychologist, we were told that we could not see anybody for over a year. Imagine being diagnosed with a life-threatening uh, condition, driving up to the emergency room at your local hospital. The doctor's telling you this is the treatment that you need to receive, and then, then telling you that you cannot see a doctor for over a year. I was so pissed. I could not believe how my city, where over 2,000 people get shot every year, could not provide basic trauma services for its people. And I knew that my son was gonna get those services. And so I called a bunch of my friends and said, look, this is what's happening, this is what I needed. I got a recommendation from an incredible therapist that we both saw for a while. And I knew that this is something that we had to do together. So I took about uh, three months off of work. I wanted to be there for him. I, whenever he woke up, I made him breakfast. We went to go see the therapist together. When we got home, we got a chance to talk. We got to learn a little bit about each other. But very soon, after a few sessions, I realized that I needed help, mm -hmm. that I needed to see a therapist. That incident of me possibly losing my son that night was something that I had to deal with. And then I realized that I was suffering from PTSD because of the many decades that I lived in the west side of Chicago receiving, being seen and being able to exposed to, be, to this violence. So we did that for a while. And the therapy was incredible. We got a chance to be able to connect. We got a chance to really uncover a lot of the things about ourselves. Um, and after a while, I started sharing what happened to me and my son to a couple of our friends. And one of the friends that I talked to was a good friend of mine, somebody that I've known for a long time, uh, a mentor, his name is Dion, and he told me how in, about a block away from where my son got shot at, his son also got shot earlier that year. And he told me about his son's suffering and he couldn't get any help. And so inevitably, for those of you that are from Chicago, the conversation came to maybe we need to move out of the city. Maybe we need to move out of the neighborhood. And I remember after having that conversation, I was like, hell no. There's no way in hell moving out of the city. I already left my home once already. I left my rancho in Mexico when I was a kid, traveled 3,000 miles from Mexico City to the border. I came in through uh, Tijuana in the backseat of a station wagon, got into an airplane, and met my parents here in Chicago on one of the coldest day of the winters. I did not want to go through that again. Fortunately, when I came here, I came to be reunited with my parents. They came here because they wanted a better life. And fortunately for me, we came to La Villita, right? We came to a community that basically raised me, where I was able to come uh, to Chicago, 
be able to be mentored by teachers, be able to, I mean, right now to this day, the neighborhood wino always looks out for me when I, when I, uh, when I leave uh, my house uh, for work. And this is where I decided to live, and this is where I'm going to raise my kids. And the thing that I love about La Villita is that now we've basically become the Mexican capital of the Midwest, right? There's almost a million Mexicans from Pilsen all the way out west. I mean, there's even Mexicans in DuPage County in West Chicago. <laughs> And the thing that I love about where I live now is that it's really rooted in our culture. It's rooted in our traditions. This is something that I know that when you are in Little Village, you are able to get what you need. And, and currently, right now, it's the center of politics in Chicago. And this is what I love about Chicago, and this is what makes it at home. It's where working class people pass traditions, and where we pass the values that are important to us and are important to our home. I remember the day that I realized that I was home. I was, uh, came back a weekend from college, went to one of my favorite blues clubs out on Lake Street and Central Park. And when I went in there, I saw an 80-year-old man playing the blues with a tejana and a belt buckle that my grandfather used to wear and listening to that black man play the blues, that's when I felt like I was at home. But not everything is as, uh, as nice or as pleasant as it sounds. I know that uh, things are tough, especially with that pendejo in the White House right now. <laughs> But the important thing for me is that I know that we know how to persevere. I mean, we even know how to send somebody to college selling tamales, <laughs> right? I mean, forget that 529 plan that some of you are right now working on. And, and for me, I feel really uh, proud because I've been doing my part to be able to make Little Village home. I've been a teacher. I've been a high school principal. I've taught gangbangers, and I've sent people over to Ivy, League, uh, to Ivy League schools. I've been a parent organizer. I've been arrested. I almost got deported uh, one year. Um, and this is something that, for me, I'm very proud of. I was appointed to uh, work in the White House office by President Obama, but the most important job that I feel that I have is to be a parent to my three kids. Unfortunately, most of my neighbors don't feel that sense of home. Unfortunately for them, being in Chicago is tougher than ever. I remember about 40 years ago when I came here, I had a brand new high school that I could go to. I had, my parents had two or three jobs that they could choose from where they were going to go to school, where they would work. And I had a mental health clinic two blocks from where I live. So after the conversation I had with Dion about the shooting, he told me, he said, you know what you should do? You should run for alderman. And then the other thing he told me, he said, you know who closed down the clinics, half the clinics in the city of Chicago? The alderman of our ward. So I had to do it. So I got to be the one to run for alderman. Who else but somebody who came here undocumented, who has been shot, who has been in the classrooms, who have been out on the streets, who is not going to stay and watch my neighbors get moved out, who's somebody who's not going to stand for shots being uh, thrown in our neighborhoods, somebody who's not going to stand for schools being closed. And what I want to be able to do is actually open healing centers. I want to be able to have a botanica and a yoga center and bring curanderas, and bring social workers, and bring therapists to come in and be able to heal. And this is why this place is so important to me. What I wrote in Nestor's book is that this is how we heal. When we're able to connect with each other, when we're able to share our stories, and when we're able to take actions together, this is how we heal. And I'm hoping that later on in February, we are all able to stand up together and defend our home. Thank you.